Well, welcome everybody to the today's broadcast with Dr. Randy McLean again. Every time we get together, my spirit just jumps. And I want to say thank you for everybody that's been sending in uh, text messages and emails and the dialogue I've had with you over the last one last week. Of course, I've had many conversations with all these broadcasts that Dr. Randy has so graciously given to us by um, the experiences, by his wisdom, and we're obviously marching through this book called Eternity Invading Time, which I re- highly recommend. I noticed, Dr. Rennie, there's people calling me up. I got the book. I got the book. So they're, oh, going, th- they're going through the book when we're on. They want to know. Oh. You got to tell me about the next chapter. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, we're, in, we're going into the DNA of Christ. If you're following us in the book, uh, mm-hmm. it's chapter six. And uh, I know there's just, there's so, you know, it's every sentence has got a loaded statement in it. And so you can just read like five words. You go, you know what? I need to, I need to settle some things inside of me, what I just heard. Anyway, um, that being said, again, it's just a tremendous honor, tremendous privilege. Super excited for you coming to Portland, October 20th through 22nd. People say, well, that's kind of a ways off. Not really. After you get through the summer and you get back into the groove of school and all that, it's just around the corner. So anyway, we will announce the location and the times and when Dr. Rennie and his wife will be here. And this, I feel, Dr. Rennie, is like a runway. We're, we're, we're building a runway into that which is going to be happening in October. Amen. Like, in the framework of all this is. But anyway, I want to jump into this right away because I know you're busy and uh, you carry a very full schedule. And again, I just so appreciate you taking time out for all of us. And I know there's people calling, looking from around the world. I see little text messages from people around the world writing stuff on your comments. So I know this is going out. And so I know it's a global message too. So, and by the way, God's global. If anybody didn't know that, I know that's a big revelation, everybody, but he actually is. This is a global message. Anyway, we've been talking about eternity invading time and it's one of my favorite subjects. And I don't have the privilege to talk with many people that dialogue like this. But anyway, you know, uh, one of the things that you marked out in this chapter, and I'd like to just kind of spring from it, uh, springboard from it today is, you know, in one of the comments you make, you know, you, you have to, uh, his glory is only experienced uh, when he is present. It's not something you can talk about and then just make it manifest. So then you kind of right. touch into, and I want to go back around to, you, you touch into uh, um, worship um, and the value of the depth of what worship can do is, you know, some things that we've talked about already. But here's what I... Really? I, I, I I want to kind of bring something out here. If I may read just the one sentence out of this, this chapter, it says this, and it's talking about, and you're making some comparison and I'm just going to, that's more than one sentence, a couple sentences. You may be asking yourself, what is this atmosphere these people experience that causes so many miracles to happen at one time? And that's always been my question. You know, how is it that I can walk into Dr. Rennie's and there's miracles everywhere. You go into a mega church, there's nothing. What's going on? So, and what you put in here is it's the atmosphere of worship. Um, it is the abandoned interest in the deity of Christ, not his ability to heal. Stop, stop the program right there, people. That needs to be un- unloaded because, see, we chase God for his ability to heal, not the privilege to be as he is. That's how I always say that. So if you can unpackage that a little bit, I'm just going to stop right there because I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here because that's a big statement right there. Okay. I said, except which, one would you, which part of it would you like me to unpack? It's, it's very, <laughs> you can tell. Well, yeah, it's that's my point. I just don't want to get so many words out there. We can't. I mean, so let's let's go back to the original part of just the glory that you just can't talk about Jesus and expect His presence to show up in the in the realm of glory. What is it that I mean? You you we've touched on before, but it, you refer to here as worship and staying in that position. Mm-hmm which then leads into this unfolding of what I just read to you. So if you could remind everybody, uh, and maybe there's some people on here that have, if this might be the first time they're watching this, because people keep joining this channel and taking all this in. So what is, what is the key that you have found that ushers in the glory? What is that? Okay, I'm going to go back further to give everybody a full concept of this. Okay. Two words I'm going to unpack. Presence and glory mm. presence and glory in hebrew the word presence is the word panim mm-hmm. panim 
means face. Now that's powerful right there. So he means face. So your own, you cannot be in his presence without acknowledging you're in his face. Mm. Okay. In the presence, we learn to live in the glory. It's like God without glory isn't God. Mm -hmm. So when you put glory and presence together, we are as he is. Yes. Okay. Now, a lot of people really do not understand it, but a lot of it is really tied to your identity. And it boils down to this simple truth. And it's something that I, I, I know it. I have taught it for 40 something years. And I, I, let me just give you this example of what I mean when I say this. Jesus was killed based on his identity. Mm -hmm. He wasn't killed based on his giftings. Now, that's a scary thing right there. Mm -hmm. Today, if somebody is a prophet, we look at them with great suspicion. But Jesus' crime was not that he was a prophet. It was that he was the son of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most of the things he did was tied to the identity, the DNA pool. So the more we learn to identify with him, we come more into the manifestation of his DNA, mm -hmm. which is the supernatural, and the supernatural becomes normal. So then the second, so then the supernatural then, I'm sorry, yes. I'm sorry, yes. So then the supernatural is not second nature, but it's now our nature. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so then that, that actually ties into the prayer that Jesus prays in John 17, make them one as we are one. Because as soon as you give yourself permission to abide in who he is, the natural DNA of who he is flows through to you. And I, I, I keep going back to the statement you said earlier in one of our interviews. You can't get, you're as much in heaven right now as you're here as you are when you go there. Yes, yeah. And that's so powerful because it proves, it, it actually answers the prayer that Jesus was Pray. praying in John 17. He's not praying for you to get to heaven to make you one. Exactly. No, you're the, you're the branch into this reality called time representing eternity. Amen. And so, you know, you, this, in that being said, the DNA of who God as Jesus is in the, in the time element, I just find it so fascinating that faith something you said here is something that supersedes or will always break the law of time. Mm -hmm. And you can't yes. break the law of time unless you're abiding in eternity. So people are going to ask, what does that look like to, to abide in, et in eternity on a daily thing? What does that look like? What's the DNA of God look like every day? Okay. Let me, let me, let me give you this one. This is very interesting. Hebrews 11 starts out by saying, now faith is itself the things hope for the evidence of things that's not seen. Uh, we know all of it. But then every verse from verse seven downwards, from not from verse five downwards, it says, and by faith, and by faith, and by faith, and by faith, and by yes, faith. Yes. And by faith. The reason being, because faith is the only way you can live in his presence. That's a statement. Now, see, that, that's, that's a lot to go into, but I'm going to take my time. Faith is the only way you can live in his presence because only in faith is the supernatural normal. Outside of faith, the supernatural is an event. So that's why the Bible says in the times that we're in, we're to live by faith. Mm -hmm. And so until we come to this place, we're going to always struggle. So that's why when we say faith versus time, I love to say it like this. Uh, time is eternity's child. Mm -hmm. uh, time is eternity's child. So time can never be greater than where it came from because eternity is the motherland of time. Then when you look in scriptures like in Ephesians, and it speaks about the ages to come, mm -hmm. the, age, no, sorry, the ages to come, only by faith 
of the ages to come now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Are you, are you saying this? This yes. is a whole nother world because in time, you have to wait because time hasn't caught up with that reality. But faith is in that reality of the ages to come now. Beautifully put. So, <laughs> so I, I like to add also, so, or my perspective on that. Okay, let me give you a simple example of what I mean about ages to come. Just something okay. real simple. Just something a little, uh, something a little real simple, but just give it about something to go. 2,000 years ago, there was a man called Jesus of Nazareth who was opening blind eyes with Mm -hmm. no laser surgery. Right. Okay, 2,000 years later, we have the technology now to do what he did 2,000 years ago. So in other words, what we're doing now was what he did then because faith is that now. Yes, yeah, yeah, I get it. So if you're waiting for technology, technology, it takes it takes years for technology to catch up with what God can do now. Yeah. Beautifully said. That's that's this that in that element also proves that God is outside of time. Yes. And those that are in him that are in time can get the benefit of the father that's outside of time. Meaning, 100%, 100%. you can pull you can pull it in through this commodity yes. called faith. I'll just use that word. Yes, yes and you yes. pull that in. That's the faith, and that's why you start looking. It says, and then by faith, Enoch was okay. So, what did Enoch do? He saw yeah. something way down the street. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, hundred percent. And yes. he got into the now. Yes. And he just he, yes. he he's out, man. That guy is gone because he saw himself. Or well, actually says in Jude, it talks about him, Jesus returning with 10,000 of his saints. And you're just going, and he said, by faith, he, he caught that. So see, see, I, I think this is so powerful, especially when it comes between, because faith is, we've always been taught, you got to have faith until it arrives. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's part of it. But I think if I, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've always seen it this way. Somebody that's in the maturity of what faith is, will always be able to present the now of who God is. Always the now. Oh, 100%, 100%. Because the secret is the only delay on faith is what we put on it. That's why Jesus wow. Jesus would say, for example, according to your faith, be it unto you. Yes. So that means if that person says, well, I'm going to walk next week, well, that it would have been next week because Jesus said, well, I'm giving it to you now, but now you can take the time when you want it to be if you want it to be now or next week either way it's still supernatural because it couldn't happen without me and so what we do is is that what god does in the now we put it in time mm-hmm. so time so time becomes the lord yeah. as opposed to jesus being lord who does everything on the basis of the finished work. So if the finished work is finished, there is no need to wait. So only in faith can you grab something before time. So the natural man cannot discern the ages to come. You say, why? Because he's stuck in science and education. But faith, but revelation is the intelligentsia of faith. And so faith sees the ages to come because mm-hmm. it can spiritually discern. Yeah. That makes us always forerunners in time because we're in a reality that time doesn't know is coming. There is so much what you just said right there because see what happens, what you just said there was this. Those that actually give themselves to become the DNA of God and the yes. mind of God, there's no delay in God. For things to be accomplished when you say it he says he sees it that's it yeah. and, and so you begin to realize there's things that are happening at a level that um that people have been taught that faith you gotta you gotta maintain your faith maintain your faith maintain your faith and yeah. that's what i'm saying I, i'm not yeah. belittling the beginning the small beginnings of faith but i am saying those that i recognize that are great men and women of faith you'll see that they can produce the now of god oh yeah Oh There's not God. a delay in that. And that's, and that's what I've, I've said in previous interviews with you. Mm-hmm. There are times when you are done with uh, preaching the word, 
we go into worship. And that's yeah. when the supernatural breaks out. Right. Right. Well, always, always, always. And, and, and it's not like it's not like you're trying to build their faith more than the people elevate themselves to the reality of what is rightfully theirs. Yes, and it, very much so. And also, that's where I'm. This is what I tell people: I'm not trying to build their faith for one simple reason, because you can't be in the presence without faith. Mm -hmm. The presence. Remember now. Why? Why do I keep going back to this? Because keep this in your mind again. The Hebrew word for the word presence is panim, mm -hmm. face. Well, one of the most powerful features of your face is your mouth. Where does faith come from? It comes from the mouth of the presence of God. There you go. Right there. You see right there? See that right there is the key. Is that we do not understand that the presence is the face of God. Yeah. And every time God speaks, he speaks from his presence. He speaks, yeah, I mean, he speaks from his face. I mean, it's interesting. So if we're in his presence, what, what does God require to be in his presence? A relationship and intimacy produces manifestation. Say that equation again. People want to write that down. <laughs> what God wants is intimacy and a relationship, and that produces manifestation. It's who you are. It's who you are to that face. It's who you are to that presence. Now, when the Bible says that he will not share his glory with another, well, the secret is you're not another. Right. We're to be as he is. Exactly. Exactly. So anytime we downplay it, it means we've not come into that reality. Wow. Yeah, that is so, so, so good. It's, it's, you know, even in the, in this chapter you're talking about, this is, I mean, this is just, this is the stuff you just go, you, you don't really, you have no permission to give yourself to be less than what the spirit of Christ is. You're, Amen. You, Amen. Amen. otherwise Amen. Jesus wouldn't have never come to, to give it to Amen. you. I mean, the, the intent is to imitate and to feel what it feels like being him. That's why it comes to us in, I get it, seed form. Starts with Praise the seed God. of Christ. And we and, it, yeah. and I think a lot of people go, well, how come if the people that are saved, they all have access to the same thing? Why does it not happen everywhere? Well, there's a because saying that starts off as a seed. Yeah. Yeah. Say yes. that again. Yes. It's because they don't have a revelation of it. There you go. They don't mm -hmm. have a revelation. It's revelation revelation is the intelligentsia of this age yes and Amen. to prove it the last book in the bible is called what <laughs> revelation yeah so if you're not in revelation you can't be in the mouth of god yeah come on now because you <laughs> yeah Reve revelation is the is the um common sense of the supernatural i think that's the way you yes it is it. yes it is it's the common sense of god so when when People go, you know, revelation, what, it, you know, I go to church, I listen to the word, that's revelation. And I'm going, no, it, the, it's not revelatory until the breath's on it. And I Amen. That, see, religion, that's the, that's the gotcha in religion. They quote this word outside of the spirit. And mm, yes. no, no go there, people. No life. There's no life. Yeah. It, it has nothing in that. So I'm just going to go to the end of what you were saying right there, because you, you said something interesting you know, in regards to faith. But here's something that I want people to sh realize at the end of the day. Um, moving uh, into the realm, once this everything closes at the end of Revelation, we're done. We're going mm -hmm. into the new heaven, new earth. Done. Yes. Yes. Faith will not be required because there's no time. N none whatsoever. None whatsoever. And then to prove it, there's a chapter in the book of Revelations where it says, and there'll be no delay. And that word literally means there'll be no more time. Yeah. Yeah. And so I it it's very, very, I mean, it's very, 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 very interesting. I mean, I, I could go into so many things regarding that that people really do not understand, but needs to be understood now more than ever because these things are real. Because really what you're doing in the supernatural, especially when it comes to healing, when you speak yeah. something into somebody, the difference between a healing 
and a miracle. One has yeah. time, the other one is absent of time. Right, right, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, the miraculous so, okay. is something that's instantaneous. That's the now of God. You want to explain that? Yes, yes. Let me let me go into that. There, notice the terminology: the working of miracles. Mm -hmm. Notice the terminology. Now, God doesn't work it because to Him it's not work; it's normal. Yeah. What's normal to you is never work. What's abnormal to you is what you have to work because you have to learn how it works. Mm -hmm. But it says to one is given the working of miracles. Now, let me explain this to you. This is something that, that makes me laugh when I teach it. When, it's, when Peter and John went to the temple in Acts chapter 3, mm -hmm. there was a crippled man there. And this is what's interesting. He was at the door of the church. That's a message. Ah. Wouldn't, I, I noticed, wouldn't go in because clearly nothing was happening there. Mm -hmm. But he was at the gate of the church. Mm -hmm. And Peter and John came by, and we know the story. Yep. And it says that they looked to, that, um, he looked to Peter and John expecting to receive something of them. And then it says something for, simple. It says that Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, pause right there. The word was spoken, but the man wasn't healed. Mm. Now, this is powerful. He wasn't, he wasn't healed by the speaking of the word. He was healed by the acting on the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because case in point, he sat there looking at him after Peter spoke the name. Now, let me tell you what the church people do. We keep saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, but that's all good. But where's the action? Yeah, yeah. So the Bible clearly says now that Peter took him by the hand. Then the Bible says, immediately, mm -hmm. his ankle bones received strength. Mm -hmm. it, no, so immediately. Mm -hmm. In other words, Peter became the point of contact for that man's faith. Mm -hmm. We are points of contacts Very because good. that man clearly didn't know how to work his faith. So Peter helped him work it for him. Yes, yes. So yes. that's why after you speak to somebody, an action is required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they nullify what is spoken now the word doesn't pass away but they nullify it mm -hmm. that's what the bible says the word of the lord endures forever well that word endure means it remains so that means whether or not you received it or not when you leave the building where the meeting was that same word that was spoken in that meeting it's as fresh as it was where you where you were when you heard it and mm -hmm. that same word is standing over you when you go home when you go to bed and that word is simply saying receive me do something yes 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 so when the it, supernatural is like that you see what yes, i'm trying to say totally. and then another key what is going to really help people is this the miracles require an instantaneous response mm -hmm. instantaneously mm -hmm. because the secret of it is the momentum is you doing it when you receive it yes yes let, let me give you an example last night at our infinity center i be I, I just started doing a teaching dr barry I, I, I probably teach when i come to you and it was simply called heaven's faith mm. what does that look like heaven's faith what does that look like? What does that sound like? What is heaven's faith? Dr. Barry, I taught it last night at the Infinity Center. And let me tell you what happened. Miracles broke up while I was speaking. And all people were saying was this. My faith just rose. It rose till it came out of me and I, could, and I just had to do something. I have a Chinese daughter called Dr. Marsha. She's in San Diego, California. And she was so stirred up last night. She called what she called Taiwan, because that's where she's from originally. Mm. And there's a baby there 
who had COVID and, you know, the fever was very, 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 now, you know, when you have a high fever, particularly when you're a baby, you're, you know, you're, truth be told, you're going to pass because mm -hmm. the fever is extremely high. Okay, listen to this now. She, the, the baby was in hospital. They did everything they could to break the fever and everything. Nothing would go. Dr. Marshall was so stirred up with that teaching I did on heaven's faith. She spoke it last night. She spoke it. Okay. In a matter of milliseconds, the fever disappeared. The COVID disappeared. That awesome. Way. Awesome. And I put she acted on what she heard straight away. The church is still debating whether or not what they heard is of God. Yes, yes. That is so, so, so true. Very powerful testimony. Oh, yeah. I remember um, um, Kim Clement told a story one time. He was in Texas, your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. Was that it? It was going down a, a an aisle and um, saw a guy there uh, in the spirit. He saw, he goes, You, sir, right there, you have holes in your bones. And God's here to heal you. God's word is here. I'm here to heal, heal the holes in your bones. And the guy says, no, no, you're not going to heal my bones. No. And he goes, what? He goes, are you sure? Because I can see you have holes. Yes, I do have holes in my bones, but I don't want the healing from you. I want it from God. And the guy yeah. was like, he's like confused, <laughs> right? Anyway, and Kim, I think, approached him again and called the story right. You have holes in your bones. The Lord is here to heal you right now. And he goes, no, I'm not going to receive it from you. Okay, so Kim gave the word of the Lord. That was the, like I'm trying to reinforce what you just said. The word yes. remains. Yes. Because yes. it won't return to God void. And this is why it's so powerful on the words that we say. Anyway, yeah. anyway, the man passes. He, he passed away from the cancer, from the very thing that God had identified through the prophet. He goes back to the church. It's either 16 or 18 years later. Goes into that same church building, walks down the aisle, and there's a kid sitting there. And he stops. He goes, sir, you have, you have holes in your bones. And he goes, I do. And he goes, well, the word of the Lord is, is here to heal you now. Do you want to receive it? He goes, absolutely. He speaks the word of healing to him, releases it to him, and the kid's whole. What you found out a couple of weeks later, the kid came back and, he, and Kim had found out he was the son of the man that had passed and the word wow. remained for his wow. son. Wow, it passed on to the son. Yes, it did. Wow. And, and so you see that that's, that's so powerful. I, I cannot reiterate the power of when you're under that realm of representing the, the wholeness of God, and when that's flowing, God's word, once it's released, it still remains. It will not come back to him void. Amen. Amen. It, 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 I have to, you know, you know this better than anybody, way more than I do, but it, it, it hangs out there because it's, it's waiting for, come on, somebody, take me. Yes, receive me, receive me. Yes. Y yes. yes. Take I mean, it. I, I, yes. I mean, I could give you testimony. I can give you, God knows, I can give you testimony after testimony after testimony of things just like that on every account. I mean, I can just, uh, it's just amazing. Let me give you an example. Um, one of my daughters last week, um, when people so um, mega cease to the ministry, you know, I have a Zoom meeting with them where they can see me. You know, I promise I'm going to bless them or whatever. Yeah. Okay, long story short now. This lady came to our meeting several years ago and she sold $20,000. Mm. Now listen to this. When she sold it, she went back home and she has some family land. No, no, they bought land and they were in the process of surveying the land or whatever. Listen to this and tell me how this comes across to you. Mm. When they got the land, they got all the geogra geographics regarding the land. Okay, listen to this now. After she sold the seed, they found oil on her land. Wow. Now they have the geographics to prove there was nothing in that land. So what did that seed do? It created. It created. Now, let me tell you something funny now. She called us again two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. And she was supposed to get some money released from the bank. And she said, Dr. Ronnie, I need you to speak. I said, because we've been having a war with these people for, for the last two, three years. I need you to speak. And, she, you know, she sowed a seed and whatever. And let me tell you something. Listen to this, Dr. Barry. 
in three minutes after I spoke the word, she got an email from the bank and the bank said, we decided to release the money that quick. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So oh, we're in, yes, so we're in a time right now where the quicker we obey God, the greater the manifestation. So good. Okay, so you, you got to step into it. Absolutely. So this is what's quickening me, Dr. Rennie. I represent sure. people that I'm connected with right now that are trying to extract oil or and have access to oil, but mm -hmm. they haven't had a release from that oil. I mean, they haven't had the the the, the privilege to receive the benefit from it. I'm, I'm representing right. a nation. I'm representing a company of people. I have personal right. friends that are tied into that. And there's like, there's this, this fight over oil right now of the yes. release. So yes. what we need to do before we go is have you proclaim over these people to release that profitability that's underneath their feet. Um, mm -hmm. Because I'm dealing with people all the time. Well, if we could just get this, this, and this, then they can finally release. And what I feel like there's like a breaker anointing there to release mm -hmm. that. And I don't mm -hmm. know if people really understand because I think they're beginning to understand. I can't say really, I'm, they're beginning to understand the power to so you never ever measure your need. You always measure with your seed. You Amen. have you have to plant the seed, people, to eradicate Amen. the need to get something done. Because if you're tied to the need, then you won't move with the seed. You move with the need, and the need will keep you captive to what it is before you can ever plant a seed. 100%. I mean, if one thing I understand from the power of what you've given through the years, no farmer goes out to the field and talks to it to expect something yeah. to grow. They yeah. have to plant a seed. Now, religion, a yes. lot of people have taken advantage of that, and they set it outside the Spirit of God, and it's taken a lot of people to the cleaners. But that does not negate the value of when somebody's actually carrying the spirit of God, the glory of God of all people. Listen to me. This is a man of God that has glory that he's been in this for decades. Ooh. And I'm coming into the reality of this is where God's leaning. I'm, I'm, I'm joining with this man of God, him and his wife, to understand the value of what glory is, the value to sow into something before it ever even arrives. This is why it ties so powerfully with the DNA of God. You don't have to have delay. You do at have all, to, as like, like with Elijah carrying all of the water of Israel, he goes to Zarephath and he's saying, if you give me what you got, give me one seed and I'll give you the ocean of what's inside of me. Mm, wow. And somebody gets the rain cloud before it's ever formed. They get the profitability before the clouds even formed. I want to be in that group. I don't have to, yeah. I don't want to have to get Elijah to sit down and pray and form a cloud for the whole nation. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying there are opportunities right now that I feel talking with you is this is cultivating something in people that they're being, that'll eradicate from the need. Amen. If you just plant the seed, people, just plant the seed. Yeah. Is because in the in eternity, there's no delay. It is, that's why when you said that, well, you know, three minutes later, well, yeah. yeah, when you're dealing with eternity, it doesn't look at a clock. Oh, now it's time because there's no clock to go yeah. by. Exactly. exactly. So I, I just feel so powerfully Elijah standing in front of this nation needs. There's a lot of needs right now in the nation. That's that's the deception to get you yeah. out of the, the, the glory realm and be captivated by time. It'll yeah. keep you it'll keep you chained to the oil that's in the ground rather than the oil of the Holy Spirit you know coming upon you to plant something to see something. And yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel the veils being lifted, even as you said that that one thing. All of a sudden, I saw oil under the ground waiting for somebody to plant the word so it can release the value of what it is. Every yes. oil, I don't know if people have noticed this, but you got to drill for that. It still remains, and until you drill, it doesn't come to the surface. Yes. The drilling yes. is the release of your planting into it by the value of your word, what you give into something. Never measure the circumstance by the need that it demands to be negotiated with you with. Amen. In it. That's why Isaac can plant in a famine and get a hundredfold. He's not captivated yeah. by the famine. Right. Exactly. 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 And you know what's prophetic about that, Dr. Bay, what you're saying there? The seed is the key because the seed becomes the title deed to the oil. There you go. And that's why when people don't give it, I say, you don't really want it. There you go. You know, so I said, somebody else can claim it. But b true business people understand. You know what I found out about? True business people don't have a problem with money. No. 
because money is money. Yeah. If you have a problem with money, it tells me you've never had money, and it tells me that money is your God. Mm. Because I'm telling you, Dr. Barry, I could sit here now. Another illustration, another illustration. A lady in Louisiana, she's followed us for years. She's got 30 acres of land in Louisiana. They just found oil there. Mm. Af mm. I'm telling you, after sowing. Now, you know what I do believe? We're in times where God wants to make his people independently wealthy of world systems. Come that on. causes the systems of man to come to the kingdom of God for resources. Absolutely. But our people have got to get into giving in a dimension that reflects it. I mean, I'm the, I mean, I mean, I understand somebody giving what they got, but I'm talking about you who really say that you're believing these kind of money. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to sow some. You're gonna have to sow some seeds that says that this thing is real to you. Yes, and that's 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 the crux of it right there. And I I always say it mm -hmm. this way. And sometimes I, I I say, listen, it shows how deep you trust God yes. by what you give into God. Amen. Amen. Oh yes. That, Amen. That that's it. I mean, everybody loves the love thing about God. They God is love. Yeah, I get that. But the mm -hmm. next level here is, do you trust him? And how you know you trust somebody is what, what you're willing to sacrifice into it. As yeah. Abraham did with the word of the Lord, sow into me your son. Yes. And so, yes. see, that's a sacrifice. That's not like, oh, you mean, you mean like write a card about him and give it to you? No, this is, this is a sacrifice. And yes. see, the exchange for that was the faith that now the father of faith that we now have and Jesus himself having a legal right to do what Abraham was going to do by faith. And it gave the path for Jesus to say there, I can go through this guy right here because he was going to sacrifice his son. There's a lot Amen. there. Yes. But see that, that measures into the value of what you're saying. Oh, I, I'm going to give you another testimony, another testimony. I was in a big event so, a few years ago. And I was talking about end time prosperity, supernatural prosperity. And I was qualifying what it means when we say supernatural prosperity and divine prosperity. I was really explaining and explaining how Matthew 24 is Jesus describing the end time marketplace. Mm. Mm. That's what all those events are. It's mm -hmm. the end time marketplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're either what that marketplace needs at the time, which puts us in a position to prosper. Because mm -hmm. we're the answer to what they have. I was speaking that and I was, and the Lord just led me to tell the people, so change your change your mini seeds and make them mega seeds. Mm -hmm. So what you've never said before. This lady, all she had to her name, I've, I've seen it too many times. And I must tell you this, Dr. Barry. There's a the Bible has a history of people who gave their lives. Yep. Yep. Yep, it's the widow with the mites. It's that whole thing. As soon as somebody engages that realm, wow. Yeah. Something, something has to break. Yeah. And Dr. Barry, I tell you before God, she ran down and she put a thousand dollars at my feet, which there was a lot of money because she came from Brazil. Mm. And I said, God's going to give you a supernatural idea overnight and you're going to have to act on it and it's going to produce for you. Dr. Barry, after she sold it, she went back to her seat. Her nose was open. Wow. She started to smell something she had never smelled before. It was a beautiful aura. And God said, put it together mm. and make it a perfume for my people. Okay. Dr. Barry, she came back to me a year later. God gave her a perfume chain. Oh, wow. Listen to this now. Her first year, she made $3 million. Wow. And that's... Because that's, the title deed was the seed. Title deed was the seed. That is so well said. That's such a powerful thing. So I think there's things that people need to really... Like you said, you need to act on that. It's not something you mill over and going, oh, no, either it's, it's either you're in or you're not. There's nothing in between. You just... If you delay in the seed, then the need remains. Amen. Amen. It's that simple. It's that yeah. simple. God's yeah. not, he's yeah. not complex. He's simple. He's deep, but he's not complex. And he's, 
Simple Amen. things, uh, switch things on. I always say it this way. Simple acts of us turn monumental acts on him. I mean, he from him comes a monumental acts. Simple Amen. acts from us, we're the fulcrum to tip a monumental act towards us. And until Amen. you give him something to work with, yes. Every yes. case in the Bible requires something. What do you have? Yes. I, I, you know, I don't have anything but a cruise of oil in my house. Perfect. Because exactly. everybody always goes by what they don't have. God always goes by what do you have? And exactly. so that, that as soon as you give the, if like you said, it's the last cruise of oil. It's the last thing. All right. Then gather the emptiness. Gather all the empty that you can. And so I'm going to go off just a little bit on the right-hand side here, just a little extra. But okay. I know that when God says, go gather empty, he mm -hmm. is saying, now you're going to see what I can do because empty is the only thing that can hold all of me because there's no framework <laughs> on empty. That's Amen. why the prophet said emptiness, go gather everything you got. Do that, do that, do that. Cause I'm about ready to write on the canvas of emptiness, all this oil well, that will be never, according to your emptiness is how much I can fill you. Exactly. So see when you empty out, God yes. goes into the abundance mode. Yes, what do you got? Does. A couple, a couple of fishes, loaves. Cool. Yeah. Give them to me. Give it all to me. All yeah. of a sudden, you know, you got baskets overflowing. See that yeah. process of emptying out to overflowing. That's something that needs to be really understood. Soon as you're emptied, you qualify to be overflowed. Amen. Amen. But you can't do that when you're testing God on every little thing. I'm not saying some people will test in your, you know, as you're in the nursery of God, I get it. But you're going to find out the quicker you can get rid of that seed, the faster your need will go away. And you're not being held hostage by a need. You're actually being overwhelmed by the seed. So, so Amen. far, these are very powerful. So, can you just, let's just, I'm just going to close it because I feel so strong. And just, let's just, people need to understand and move on this. Mm -hmm. But that oil thing's got me because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm even still getting calls. Even this last week, a nation called me and was talking about some stuff that you're talking about right now. But I feel there's an authority in the atmosphere to break the value of what's in the ground by the proclamation of what's in us from up, up above, I can say it that way. <laughs> But the Amen. declaration coming from what you've experienced, mm -hmm. can you just release that over those people and then we'll just yeah. we'll call it good. Yes, yes, I will. But they must release seed. Absolutely. You all you who are hearing this, you must release seed. Mm -hmm. You say why? Because what I say, your seed is gonna be that point of contact. So in other words, if there's no seed, this prayer stops in my mouth. Yeah. You've got to release that seed. Yeah. Okay. This is the word of the Lord that I hear, and I'm going to speak it. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. I break the delay on the ground. Mm -hmm. I break the delay on the ground and the mechanisms in Jesus' name supernaturally. I call them to come together. I call them into being mm. in the name of Jesus. And every opposing force be dismantled supernaturally. Let hearts be exposed so that truth be seen and that you make them a Joseph in the marketplace. I pray the delay now in Jesus' name. I have spoken. Amen. Amen. It is so. In Jesus' name, release your seed and step into the spirit of that word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That is so powerful. Thank you for doing that. And people, Amen. you can um, get the value of what we're saying by what he was saying is the seed needs to be released. I, it is so strong. Dr. Rainey, I don't get this. In this realm, this is very rare for me to pull on mm -hmm. the value of what the earth is wanting to yield to the sons of God. But yeah. as, G, as God gave his son, he gave the seed, his, his son given, crucified, yes. sacrificed on a cross, resurrected to do what? To bring multiple mm -hmm. images to the value of what Jesus is. It was a seed that was required in the form of what was called Jesus himself, sacrificed, then multiplied in the form of you and me. Yeah. So powerful. So with that being said, people, you can um, give into this ministry. 
you know where to go with that. There's, um, there's multiple ways to do this. So I just want to say again, thank you, Dr. Rennie, for what's no happening. Problem. And I, I feel there's a nation that's on the, it's on the precipice right now uh, yes. of the yes. release of what's underneath the ground. I know that yeah. because I'm working with them, but they've yes. had a lot of fight over but it. Let me, let me just tell you what I heard in the spirit. The Lord just told me to say this, so I'm going to say this. There are new power brokers coming on the scenes because the nations now are not able to work with the old oil power brokers. Mm. See, this is why if people really understand, this is your time. Yes, yes, and, yes. And with the oil being in supply right now, oil in tight supply, if they, I'm telling you, if they give, God will release it because the nations will look for them. I'm telling you, I've seen this before. Yeah. I know it. I, I know. know it. I know it. I know it. And there's tremendous authority in that. People hear the word of the Lord. There is a, there's a, there is going to be a, as much, as much I see it as they hit oil in Texas and it's speed, it goes up through the frame structure up and it's just a going, it's Go coming out of the right. ground with great force, like a big geyser. Yeah, there's the word. It's I just see a geyser coming forth to those that yes. will give into this reality. It's not based on, well, if it, if it finally breaks, then I will. No, that's not how this works. It's oh, when okay. you plant. Yes, it will. It's a guarantee. It's the title yeah. deed, as you said. So, Wow, that's powerful. So powerful. Thank you, Amen. Dr. Rennie, again. I mean, it's just like, whoo, there's some stuff here, people. So Amen. anyway, I uh, appreciate you so much. So looking forward to the months ahead. And then obviously your arrival here in October. We'll keep Amen. everybody posted as this comes unfolding. And you can understand the momentum. I can feel the momentum. It's expanding. We have the right to be the DNA of God. Please Amen. understand that. God would Amen. not send his son unless the intent was to be the DNA of his son. That's Amen. it's, it's that it's that clear to me. All right. Amen. Well, thank you, Praise Dr. Rennie. Appreciate you. You're awesome. Love to you and your wife. We'll see you next week. All right. Bless you all. All right.